in the Bay Area Music Group. How is Clay and Andre for tonight? Uh, Andre won't play. Um, Clay will warm up and we'll see. But uh, he was doing better this morning when he checked in with the training staff, so I'm hopeful that he'll play. Any other questions? Over here on the left side. Uh, Mark Lee College, NBC News Radio. Coach, I've seen what LeBron did in game one. Um, would you entertain the idea of maybe double teaming him right as he crosses half court to get rid of him, have him get rid of the ball, have his team he's forced to think of play? Uh, I appreciate the question. Um, I'm, I'm always amused that I'm asked to come up here two hours before the game and answer questions about strategy. Um, I understand this is the protocol, but um, I'm not going to reveal what we're going to do defensively. That would seem quite silly to me. <laughs> the fact that I'm here two hours before the game seems silly to me. But i got to do what i got to do. No problem, Coach. Thanks for the question. Good right. try. Right side. Michael Pina, Vice Sports. Uh, Sean Livingston has obviously had a lot of success over the past few years without a three-point shot, but uh, have you ever uh, encouraged him to step beyond the arc since you've been his coach uh, over the past few years? We talked about it his first year here, and he shot a few corner threes that year, uh, but he never got comfortable with it, and uh, so we never really um, pressed the issue. I think he's a great shooter, but he knows his range, he knows his game, and so he sticks to that. With the athletic, uh, two things. First, it, has Andre shown any progress to make you opt more optimistic that he could maybe play in Cleveland? And then two, have you ever, rem can you remember Clay having to play limited and, and when he's been on the court, maybe hobbling around, how effective has he been? Um, I'm, I'm optimistic Andre will play at some point in the series. I, I, uh, he has gotten better gradually, but uh, there's no way of knowing for sure at this point. And as for Clay, it just seems like Clay is never injured. I don't really remember, other than this year when he hurt his uh, wrist, um, I don't remember him ever being hobbled before. Uh, Melissa Roland, Barry News Group. Uh, Steve, is the final determination uh, regarding Clay Thompson just going to be uh, how much pain he's in when he goes through warps? Is it just a pain tolerance thing? or? Uh, I. He's going to go warm up, and uh, if he and the training staff say that he's okay, then we'll play him. Uh, fourth row on the right side. Uh, Steve Connor, the now San Francisco Chronicle. Uh, what have you thought about Patrick McCaw's story just a couple months ago, thinking he might be paralyzed to now being able to play meaningful minutes in the NBA Finals. Yeah, it's a phenomenal story. It's um, it's a huge relief to be honest more than anything given uh, his state that night. That was a terrifying uh, moment for him and his family. And so it's great to see how quickly he's recovered and, uh, and he's done a good job uh, when we've thrown him out there for limited minutes. He knows what he's doing. It's good to see him have his, uh, his health back and out there on the floor. Next question, fourth round center. John Arano, uh, trying to ask a turkey. Coach, um, do you see isolation plays with KD and the ball movement as either or are they simply uh, tools in your toolbox that you go back to? Uh, I, th I think it's uh, ideally mm -hmm. they're blended together. And uh, when we're at our best, that's what you see. You see the ball moving and you see KD uh, isolating. Um, you know, maybe after we get some action or at the end of a shot clock when the defense has done its job. And, uh, you know, we are incredibly blessed to have him uh, to bail us out um, uh, out of uh, plenty of possessions. Um, and um, obviously we're a motion team, a flow team, and so um, we need both. Second row, over here. Hi, Steve. Nathan Buck with ABC 7 Sports. Uh, you said, obviously, Clay hasn't been injured. He's never missed a playoff game in his career. So for you, just dealing with rotations as well as switches, anything new for you, or you kind of have a flow if he is not able to go? Yeah, we, we met as a staff this morning to go over that uh, scenario. And uh, so we have a plan in place if he doesn't play, and uh, we'll go from there. But um, this is how it has to work when the guys are out. You just uh, you got to turn to the next option. and. Guys have to be ready to step up and play. Monty, on the right. 
Mike Poole, NBC Sports Bay Area. Steve, I, even though Andre's not playing, can you, is there a way you can sort of quantify what his value is to the team, specifically the young players on this team? It looks like, you know, he has a pretty heavy influence on those guys, like Kavan and the... Yeah, not, not just those guys, but us, our, our coaching staff, too. He came into the huddle the other night in game one with a great suggestion that we uh, went with, and it worked. So uh, Andre knows the game as well as anybody, and uh, I always welcome his uh, input. And um, he's been a great mentor for the younger guys in, in this group the last few years. And uh, he's doing everything he can um, while he's on the sidelines to, to help us out. Any right. questions for Coach? Thank you. All right, thanks. Thank you.